In today's video, I'll be doing a full walkthrough and tutorial of the playground mode. In my opinion, I believe that the playground mode is a much better alternative than the chat GPT web interface. So the main differences between the playground mode and the web app that we have on chat GPT is that we have the model switcher and instead of being charged $20 per month that we're charged from using a chat GPT plus account, we're able to be charged directly by the API in which we're using. In order to get access to the playground mode, it's very easy to do so. All you have to do is spend at least $5 on OpenAI, and then you will be upgraded to a level tier two. And that means you will have access to all of the latest APIs and you'll get enough usage that you won't be throttled when generating content. So the main difference is that you're not using the web app and you have a little bit more customization options on the playground mode. For example, we can prompt our system, we have our user, we have our model switcher. We also have temperature settings, maximum length settings, and some other settings available on the playground mode that we do not have available on the chat GPT web interface. So let's get into how you can actually make the most out of the playground mode, specifically the chat mode, and get the highest quality SE optimized articles and blog posts. As I mentioned earlier, we can prompt the system on the left hand side here. So the system will allow us to be able to tell the AI exactly what is the outcome we're going for, which is creating high quality SEO optimized articles. For example, I can tell the AI that you are an expert blog post writer. You specialize in writing high quality SEO optimized blog posts in the AI niche, and you can obviously change this for whatever niche that you're in. And you can also tell it that you specifically write about how AI is transforming the copywriting industry. This can be your topic in which you're writing about or the keyword in which you're going after. And of course, you can change this for whatever topic you're writing about. You can also include your internal links. You can also include a call to action. You can include any business information that you have within the system here and tell the AI to use that information when it's writing the article. You can also include further instructions like telling the AI that you always write in Markdown, you always include lists, tables, charts, and you write in a simple to read human-like sound. Essentially anything that you wanna include within the system, you can include that and the AI will follow those instructions. It's very, very good at following instructions when you enter it within the system. This is comparable to the custom instructions that you have when you're using the ChatGPT web interface. Just before we continue this video, I wanna let you know that I've released a brand new course which shows you everything that you need to know to create the best quality articles or blog posts using AI. All of the videos are completely new. It's not recycled or videos that I've already done on this channel. It's completely new strategies that allow you to create the best SEO optimized content that will rank on the first page of Google. So if you want to check out that full course, I'll leave a link for it in the description below today's video. Now let's continue. So now that our system is prompted, we can then go ahead and enter our user message. But before we do so, let's talk about temperature settings. So the temperature will tell you how creative you would like your output to be. The higher the number, the more creative your outputs will be. I like to keep my temperature anywhere between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. I find that that works best. Your maximum length will tell you how long you would like your content to be. So this is going to be the maximum output that we'll be getting back from this specific message in which we're entering to the AI. And we have some other settings here, but I rarely ever use the frequency penalty or the presence penalty. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. So now that we have our settings, and of course, this is our model um, chooser. So we can choose between any models in which we would like to use. For this example, we are using GPT-4-1106, which has a 128,000 token limit. It is still in preview mode, but it's really, really good. Once we're happy with our settings, we can then go ahead and enter a message for the user. So I've told it to create an in-depth SEO optimized outline for the blog post topic, how AI is transforming the copywriting industry, be exhaustive and write in Markdown. So we can go ahead and submit this. And as you can see, the AI is very good at understanding context. And we don't really need to overly prompt the AI, especially when we're using GPT-4-1106. I know that most of you guys are used to the prompts in which I use, but I've been testing around and using very simple prompts. And I find that the output quality is either the same or sometimes it can be even better because the AI also needs some space to, to kind of do its own thing. And when you overly prompt the AI, sometimes your output is actually a little bit um, less in terms of quality. So this is the outline in which we get back. We get our intro, the evolution of copywriting, the fundamentals of AI in copywriting, impact of AI, efficiency, quality, AI, copywriting tools and softwares, how copywriters are adapting to AI, challenges and concerns, ethical considerations, 
the future of AI and copywriting and a conclusion. So overall, I would say that this is a pretty good outline. So now that we're happy with our outline, we can simply go ahead and tell the AI to write the full article. A good prompt in which you can use, you can simply tell the AI to write the full article using the best SEO practices, include lists, tables, charts, bolded words, external relevant links, and be in depth and also write in Markdown. So let's go ahead and submit this and we'll be able to see the full article once it's completed. Okay, so here is the full article in which we get back from the first look of it. It seems pretty short, so it is very, very short. Actually, let's go ahead and do a quick word count. In terms of word count, it's only about 432 words. So what I would do is I would simply tell the AI to expand this article, keeping the same style, and usually it does a pretty good job. And instead of using the same model, I'm going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. I'm also going to increase our maximum length just to make sure that we're getting um, a longer output. And GPT 3.5 works really good at expanding content. I find once you generate the article using GPT 4 Turbo, you're able to get much better outputs when you expand it using GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. But you can test this out for yourselves. You can expand it using GPT 4 or GPT 3.5, whatever works for you. And you'll kind of see the difference in the output quality. So overall, this is the full expanded article in which we're able to get back. And as you can see from first glance, it's definitely much longer. So this article is about 1200 words, which is pretty good. But as you can see here, it's much more in depth and it also has the charts. And I believe it's included some links that we had from before. So let's go ahead and actually convert this into um, HTML because it's now in markdown mode. So to do this is head over to markdown to html.com. And once you convert it, you'll be able to see how the article looks like and what it will look like on your website. So we can see the H1s are already um, been added. We can also see that there's some bolded words. There's some lists. There's a little bit of a nice chart here that was included. Um, here we see the bolded words and the list. And it's a pretty good, well formatted article. So overall, um, I would say that this is a pretty decent article. If you want, you can even expand it further to get even longer content. And we can probably improve the quality with using my typical prompts in which I use. But I wanted to just show you guys an overview of how you can use the playground mode because a lot of you actually do not know that this is available. And it's actually much better in my opinion to get longer, more in-depth content because you're able to use features like the system, you're able to use the temperature settings, the maximum length settings. You're able to do a little bit more. The only drawbacks that I can see from the playground mode is that you do not have the multi model approach. So that means you do not have Dolly three included in the playground mode. What I can do is I can tell the AI to create a description for a prompt for an image in which I can use. And then I can take that, um, that prompt and pop it into Dolly three, but I cannot do that specifically on the chat mode. That's the only thing that I think is a little bit of a drawback to using the chat mode. But other than that, I think it's better than using the chat GPT web interface. If you guys want to see more in-depth videos on how to use AI to write the best, highest quality articles and blog posts, then I highly recommend that you check out my paid course. It is currently in beta, so it's actually on a discounted price. So if you join right now, you'll be able to save a lot of money and you'll get access to all of the future videos that I will be uploading. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link for the course in the description below. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.